Hello friends and welcome to another itemization video. We're going to be talking about the magic stick and the magic wand today. It's a little different than other videos because usually I try to educate you guys on, you know, when an item is good, when it's bad, should you be buying it or not. For the magic stick, that's not the case. You just you just should buy this item probably. If you are not super confident in your itemization, you probably just should default to get this. This is one of the most purchased items by probably every hero in the game. Almost every hero can reasonably buy this item. And if you're a support player, which there's a high chance you are because this channel is focused on supports, you should probably just buy this item. If you're not sure, just default to buying it. Magic Stick can probably be bought every single game. Whether you upgrade to the Magic Wand or not, that is a little bit more up to debate. We'll talk about that. But at least for the Magic Stick, you're probably going to buy it. So the question is actually, how soon should I buy a magic stick? Because it's a funny item in the fact that eventually this item is incredibly cost efficient, probably the most cost efficient item in this game, because it gets a charge every time someone casts a spell within 1200 range and they're in vision. And there will be hundreds of spell casts every game of Dota. So eventually the magic stick gets its value. But that is the question. When will it reach that point where it's really good? Because when you first buy it, it's not that good. So we're trying to figure out how soon can I get away with buying a magic stick because I know it'll pay off eventually. But do I need other things first? And usually it's consumable regen. So let's get into it. You get 15 at this time anyways, 15 health and mana per charge. And the magic stick can store up to 10 charges. The magic wand, you get three stats. You can go up to 20 charges. We'll go into these a little bit more later. Now, before even getting into these points, let me explain the holy locket aspect. Some of you might be wondering, oh, hey, I might want to buy a holy locket. Should I, like, should I factor that into whether I build a magic wand or not? No. Holy locket has been in the game for a little bit now, but it's still not quite feasible. We're finally reaching the point where people are starting to experiment with it a little bit more. But for the most part, I would say you probably will not build a holy locket on most heroes. That's okay, though, because Magic Wand is really good even without needing to build it into anything else. This, was, this is a staple in the game for a reason. It's really, really good. And the fact that it does or does not build into anything else is irrelevant to the rest of this video. You will just buy a magic wand because it is good, or a magic stick at least. So we're not gonna have to worry about that anymore. Next, this does not replace consumable regen. That's the biggest mistake I see, where people go to the lane and they buy one set of tangos and they buy a stick and they think the stick will give them the regen they need for the laning stage. It just does not. It is really bad at that. On the next slide, we're going to go into that a little bit. Following that, it is good when there are frequent low damage spells on the enemy team. Frequent because the more they cast spells, the more charges we're going to get. Like We get more value out of the stick if they're casting a lot of spells. Only a few heroes can do that, though, because at the start of the game, many spells are somewhere between 70 and like 130 mana. And mana pools range between like 300 to, let's say, 600, something like that. So many heroes in the game can only cast about three spells before they're out of mana. Three. And that's not very good. But there are a couple heroes that can cast a lot more spells than that. And that's when it starts to be good. But the next thing, you know, frequent, okay. But the low damage, why does that matter? Well, we only get 15 health per charge. So say they cast a spell on us. It does 100 damage, let's say. 15 health back, so now it's 85. It's better than 100, but we're still taking 85 damage. But what if they only do 50 damage to us? We're going to get back 15, so now they've only done 35 damage to us. Relatively, the, st the stick charges are a lot better when the enemy does not do a lot of damage. Better than low damage is no damage. So if the enemy has to cast a lot of spells and it's not going to hit you at all for whatever reason, and we're going to go into heroes later, that is really good because now we're getting charges and we didn't have to take any damage for that. That is really good. 
but not all heroes are like that. Now, it's bad against chain stuns and high damage. Chain stuns, because they can just kill you before you use the magic stick. And if you don't activate the magic stick, all those charges do not mean anything. And so if they have a lot of stuns in their lane, and they have a lot of burst, they could just kill you before you get to use the stick. And then that's 200 gold that has not done anything for us. So if they have a lot of stuns, or if they have a lot of damage, it's not that good. Even if they're not necessarily killing you in a burst, uh, the high damage aspect is just the opposite of the low damage aspect, right? If they did 50 damage to us, like that was pretty good. But what if they're someone like Disruptor, who can do 180 damage with one spell cast, and we get back 15 health from that? Who's winning that? We spent 200 on this magic stick, and he bought like three mangoes. He's going to do a lot more damage than we're going to get back in value from this magic stick. What I hope that has started to reveal is that all of these tie together. We have to have enough consumable regen to get through the laning stage. But once we have enough consumable regen, we might consider buying a magic stick early because we can start getting the value from it. Because they will cast spells in the lane and we can start building up some charges but we, meet, we need to make sure we're not just going to die if we have the magic stick. Like, if they have a high burst and chain stuns, we're better off just buying some extra stats to give ourselves more life. Uh, because guess what? We don't have to cast anything to have those stats. They're just always there. And if we survive, we can pop our salve and heal all the way back up. And a salve is cheaper than the like three, four spells the enemy team had to use to try to burst us down. Let's move on. Let's start painting numbers in this. Not going to go super math heavy, but these are charges, right? So if you have one charge, you get 15 health. Magic stick goes up to 10 charges, so you could have up to 150 HP and mana burst heal. And if you have a magic wand, it goes up to 20, 300. It seems good on paper, but think about the spells your enemies are going to cast. Let's say they need to cast 10 spells to get to 150 heal. 10 spells, let's say each of them does 100 damage. Some spells do more, some do a little less, so that's an okay estimate. 1,000 damage for their 10 spell casts. And you get 150 health back. You're dead, or you're really low. What about in terms of mana? You're going to let them cast 10 spells before you get 150 mana, and you're just not going to cast spells back? Because 150 mana, that's about one spell cast for a lot of heroes. Maybe two. You're going to let them hit you with 10 spells before you return two? Or one? Eh. That doesn't feel that good. They've probably won the lane if they're casting a bunch of spells, zoning you out, and you're just sitting in the back waiting for your magic stick to be good. So we still need the consumable regen, the tangos, the salves, mangoes. We need to play the lane. But then if we still have a magic stick at that point, now we're starting to get some value and we're still able to play. Now here we can see our other options besides a magic stick. And of course there are like other stuff too. Uh, there's a bit more math in one of the early itemization videos I did on starting items. So if you want to see that, you can go. But these are just some basic stuff where a tango is 90 gold and a salve is 110. So for 200 gold... We could have about 700 worth of heal. Or we could have this stick. And people in 10 spell casts could feasibly do 800 damage. And with these starting items, we'll be mostly healthy. We'll be okay. But if we had just a stick, we get back 150. It's we can't we can't be in the lane. And then same deal. Mangoes and clarities as mana, they are much faster than waiting for 10 spells to be cast to get 150 mana. So to be able to play the lane early, you just you have to get consumable still. You can't trade it out. There's a couple exceptions that we're going to get to when we talk about heroes. And those are people who cast a crazy amount of spells. Spoiler alert! It's Bristleback and Batrider, and Undying to an extent. We'll get into that in a bit. So, next question. When do I upgrade my magic stick to a magic wand? I have either started with a magic stick... Or I got it 
a little later after the laning started. Which, by the way, we'll go into more detail when I'm talking about the heroes. I realize it's still like a little up in the air. But eventually you have a magic stick, and you're trying to decide, when do I build a wand? The thing is, the upgrade from magic stick to magic wand, component-wise, is not actually that good. Why? Well, let's look. For a magic stick for 200 gold, we get 10 charges. Well, we don't get the charges, but we can build up to 10 charges. For 50 gold, we get one iron branch, which gives one attribute to all of them. And a magic wand takes two iron branches, so we have two, two here. For the remaining 150 gold to upgrade our magic wand, we get one more attribute. Does that seem right? We paid 50 for the for the one here, and now 150 for one more? It's not gold efficient. Well, what about the 10 charges? That's kind of good. But a magic stick could use 20 charges. Like, you get to 10, you use the stick, and then you build up 10 more. You can still get 20 charges, you just can't hold all of them at once. Well, is that good or not to be able to hold 20 charges? Yeah, eventually, but let's say you're playing the lane. Like, would it kill you to use, to like trade with them a little bit, cast a spell, and then use your 10 stick charges? Be full health, and you did some damage, and then you just start building up charges again? You know, it's not that bad. For 150 gold, you could invest in a lot of other things. You could get a wind lace with another 100 gold. You could just get three more iron branches and get three stats. That's pretty good. Not slot efficient, though, which I kind of revealed it. That is the true value of this 150 gold, is that you turn all of this into one slot. What was three slots? Magic stick, iron branch, iron branch. One slot. Slot efficiency is very real in Dota. I was going to say especially for supports, but it applies to everyone. But supports will end up carrying wards, dust, smoke, things like that. Their slots fill up very fast. That's kind of the best part of upgrading to a magic wand, in my opinion. And so, you should not do this if you don't need those slots. Something I hate seeing is people who have like two iron branches, they have a magic stick... They don't even have another item. They're like, this is really early in the lane. And then they just build the magic wand. And they still have like four empty slots. You don't need the slots yet. We just talked about slot efficiency being one of the best perks of this. If you haven't filled up your inventory yet, you probably don't need to upgrade to a magic wand. That's my own opinion anyways. Some people do like the magic wand early as a fighting item. Because, you know, three stats, 20 charges. Like, if you're going to get in a lot of fights, it's pretty good. But I really encourage you to try to fill your slots with some other small items first. Say you get boots, two iron branches. I'll do it here on the camera. You got boots, two iron branches. You got wards. You got your magic stick. You got a wind lace. That's your six slots. You can now upgrade to a magic wand if you need to. But, would it kill you to also get a ring of Basilius? Where's my fingers in this camera? A ring of Basilius, and then just put one of the iron branches in your backpack? It's a little inefficient, because you have an item that could give you stats, but you don't have the space for it. But it's just 50 gold. And then you could buy the magic wand after that. Just a thought. Fill up your slots before upgrading your magic wand. As a general rule, I think it's pretty good. And then, when you need more slots because you'd like to start buying more items but you don't have any space, then you consolidate all of your branches and your stick into one slot with that 150 gold. So to summarize that, we don't replace consumable regen. We need to have enough regen for the lane before we think about the stick. It's best against frequent low damage spells and bad against chain stuns and high damage spells. Magic stick, we're going to buy every game pretty much. Magic wand, if you're a 5 position, you'll probably buy a magic wand because it is slot efficient and we fill our slots with a lot of other random junk and so the magic wand tends to be a very safe purchase. If you're 
fairly new to the game or you're not confident in your itemization, just buy a magic wand pretty early after you fill up some other small items in your slots. Magic stick also pretty good. Now, if you are if you are more familiar with the game and you're thinking about when can you skip these, it's when 250 gold matters a lot to you. And if you're not sure when that is, then don't worry about it. Just build the magic stick, magic wand. For this to be worth it, you need to know why I need 250 golds more. Like, why do I need that now instead of like later? Why can I... What am I saying here, guys? Like, why would you need something 250 gold sooner? That's because you're playing faster and you're trying to buy a blink really quickly, a four staff really quickly, a yule scepter really quickly, whatever. You need an item as fast as possible and these three stats are not like game changing to you. And so you skip the magic wand and you go straight into your item. If you're position four and you're doing really well, you might even skip the magic stick, but I don't really recommend that. I, I really like magic stick just casually. Sometimes if you're someone who really needs a blink dagger, you can do it. Someone like tiny or earth shaker, you might see them skip magic stick and get the blink sooner. And then sometimes you'll even see them pick up the stick after that. If you start with iron branches, you'll probably build into a magic wand, by the way, because it's not very efficient to sell those branches. You already have them, so then you just build into a wand. But if you don't start with iron branches in your starting build, then you might buy a magic stick and you might just keep it at that. I apologize if that's not the most clear, but let's move on into heroes and maybe that'll help, help clear things up on when I might buy this item or not. A little bit more detail on when you switch from magic stick to magic wand and then we'll go into the heroes i promise let's say you're playing lich you've got something like this actually let's not get that yet okay say this is your build should you build into a magic wand yet not really because you still have an extra slot whatever you want to buy next you could what if i want to buy okay you should probably build your tranquils right that's pretty good so you could get this and now your slots are filled so it's like should i get the magic wand well i could or for about the same price 175 for the ring of region i could finish my tranquils and that's a really good item let's do that now what now i might want to buy okay now let's pick up the raindrops actually now let's say i have raindrops i don't want to sell the raindrops yet i want them to go through their charges and stuff but i want to buy Hmm. Let's say another windlace. That's a really good item to casually have. What do I do? You could put your wards in your backpack and have all these items in here. And then when you need to use your wards, swap them in. That can be okay. But sometimes, especially if there's like an invis hero in the game, sometimes you really just want to be able to place a ward as soon as possible. Especially if you're... Let's say you're walking into a kind of risky spot and then you realize I forgot to put my wards in now let me just wait in this dangerous spot for six seconds that's not very good or maybe you're chasing a kill they run up high ground you would love to place a ward up there to see them but it's in your backpack there are some reasons why you want to just have your observers in here in which case what do we swap out now instead well an iron branch you know it's only 50 gold one attribute so it's not that big of a loss but it is one attribute so you have two choices. From here, you know you want another slot, but you don't want to be inefficient. You could build the wand, and I'd be okay with that. Because you're going to free up two slots. And now you can easily pick up the windlace, and now you can start working on your next major item. Let's say a, a glimmer cape. And it's going to go here, and you're not going to be very slot inefficient. And hopefully by the next time you buy your like next item, maybe your raindrops are broken. And if they're not broken, we could swap out the windlace or the wards. Up to you. Or, let's go back here. Or, you can buy your windlace, swap out the stick, and then you build the wand. Either of those are okay, because now, and this is what I tend to do, by the way, is I put one magic, I put one of the sticks in my backpack and I'll have like my next item here. This works out because, hey, we got our windlace a little sooner, and I like having a windlace more than I liked having a magic wand 
and now I can free up my slot. So now I'm getting my magic stick, which was being a little inefficient here. Now it gets pulled back into my inventory. I'm very happy with that. And now I have my next free slot for my next major item that I am, I've am. i decided to build Glimmer or whatever, you know? And then I finish Glimmer, and look at that. This was a little inefficient for a bit. I swapped it out. Oops. But hey, I finished my Glimmer, and now I'm being slot efficient again. Magic Wand, or the Raindrops Break, great, because I wanted to start working on my Force Staff. Look at that. And in this way, I never keep too many items in my backpack. And you'll notice my slots are constantly filled. Okay, slot efficiency. Now, if I just had, oops, now if I just had a magic stick and I never bought iron branches, maybe I just leave it at a magic stick. Maybe I really need a glimmer cape. I'm playing against a necrophos or something. I really want a glimmer cape as soon as I can to save my carry. Okay, I don't have to get the wand. Magic stick is still really good. 200 gold, pretty cheap. Three stats are quite nice in the magic wand, but... I need this a minute sooner. Two minutes sooner, maybe. And that's fine. It's fine. Let's go talk about heroes. I don't even have to uh, cut or anything. We'll just quit here. Now we're here at heroes. The storm I am the dead of Against these three, you can buy a magic stick to start. You'll still want... All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contradict myself a little. I said you can't replace consumable regen. Against Bristleback and Batrider, you can replace a little bit of regen. Not all of it, but a little. So for, say, for example, you were going to get a Mango. Don't get the Mango. Get a Magic Stick. He cannot lane without casting Quill Sprays or Viscous. Quill Sprays is far more common. Look at this cooldown. Three seconds for 35 mana. He can spam this, and he does. It's how he lanes. Batrider, how does he lane? Sticky Napalm, 3 seconds, 20 mana. They spam this spell. Sticky Ma Napalm doesn't actually do damage to you unless he auto-attacks you. A lot of the time, he's not going to be targeting you, the support, because you're off to the side a little bit. He's probably hitting your core. No damage to yourself, getting a ton of charges. You're going to have, like, 10 charges really quickly, which is worth more than a mango. So it's easy to replace the mango. But at 10 charges, that is 150 health, which is, like, nice, but that's not a salve. And so sometimes you still need to get a salve, still need to get maybe two sets of tangos. Can't really skip those. But it's easier to skip mana regen to get the stick. More dangerous to skip health regen to buy a stick early. Now these two, it's because they cast spells so fast. Undying plays by maxing... Not maxing, he... He casts Decay very frequently. It's how he plays. So you're going to get a decent amount of charges. And the way health works in this game is that when you lose all your strength because he's stealing it, that 150 heal becomes much more relative to your remaining health pool. Like he steals a lot of your health. You have 300 health left. You have a total health pool of 300. You're sitting at like 100. You magic stick. You're almost full health. Your strength comes back. The percentage stays the same, so now you're sitting at like 500 out of 600 health. It's very good against Undying. Just be careful and not overstay your welcome and get killed by Undying. Like, even though you have stick charges, you pop them, you're like, oh, I'm at 250 out of 300 health. That's still only 250 health. You still have to be careful of Undying killing you. But against three, these three heroes, I think starting with a magic stick is very feasible. And it's something I frequently do. Are there other games where you can start Magic Stick? Yes. I used to be pretty hard on Magic Stick. I, I My opinion shifted it a little bit. I think there are more cases you can buy a Magic Stick now. But you just... There are two conditions. One, we can't skip the consumable regen. We still have to have enough regen to play the lane. And there can't be another item that would be better. So, like, say, say a Windlace. That's a very similar price. Some lanes, you have to have a Windlace to play safely. Like, against a Clockwork. If Clockwork gets on top of you, the Magic Stick doesn't do anything. But the Windlace helps you keep your distance and not get killed. 
In that case, a wind lace is a lot better. But some lanes, it's very unclear, and you don't really need a wind lace. You don't really need a ring of protection. I don't really need starting stats, stuff like that. I don't need to start with like five mangoes. Then a magic stick can be a decent starting item as long as the enemy lane casts a good amount of spells that fit our earlier description. They, they don't do too much damage and they are going to cast some spells. So here are a lot of heroes that I think warrant an early stick. So you may not start with it, but you might queue it up first and buy it pretty quickly. But depending on the mix of heroes, maybe you can start with a stick. So like Abaddon alone, I, I don't really feel like I need to start stick. Abaddon plus like a Nature's Prophet 4, I definitely don't really feel like I need the stick. But Abaddon 4 plus, say, I don't know. Skywrath, I guess. Okay. Now we have two heroes that cast a decent amount of spells. Now I might start stick. Now to go through these, I don't I don't really need to go through these. Many of these heroes will just cast a lot of spells in the lane. That is why they're in this list. Abaddon, he's going to cast shield a lot. Might cast mist coil. That's not very common. Most people just cast a lot of aphotic shield. Guess what? Aphotic shield doesn't always hit you. So every time he casts it, you're going to get a, a charge. It's pretty good. Axe, good axes, will cast a lot of battle hunger in the game because it's pretty cheap. The cooldown's a little long, but he's just going to cast it a lot so you can get some early charges. Beastmaster, summons a lot of boars and hawks. Free charges. Brewmaster, no matter what build he does, as the game changes, patches shift, he kind of switches builds, tends to cast a lot of spells, though, and they're not always directed at you. Earthshaker's on here, but it only applies if it's a core Earthshaker. If it's a core Earthshaker, he will cast a lot of enchant totem to secure last hits. If it is a support Earthshaker, he's going to cast Fissure like once a minute. That's not very good for a magic stick. So if it's a support Earthshaker, he, he would actually be down here. Night Stalker, oh, skipped. Elder Titan has to cast Astral Spirit constantly. It's how he plays the lane. He steals damage. He, he does ever so slight amounts of damage, but it's really about stealing damage and armor and all that stuff. And he just, he can't play the lane without doing this. You know he is going to cast a lot of spells. Night Stalker, awful laner, has to cast uh, Void to secure last hits. Tidehunter, gonna cast a lot of Anchor Smash. Timbersaw, varies a little bit, but very likely he's gonna cast a good amount of Whirling Death and Timber Chain. So you're gonna get a good amount of last hits. Arc Warden, Q and E. He doesn't use those to harass so much, but eventually he's going to go on you and he's going to cast them like five at once, trying to kill you. And if you survive, maybe with those five stick charges, you salve up, you're good because this guy just used like all his mana to do that. Bloodseeker. Back in the day, Blood Rage did count as a spell cast. And because it was free, you would get a lot. That's not the build anymore. I'm just mentioning that in case it ever does shift back because he does seem like he's in a weird spot. He might get patched again. I don't know. But with a current build where he spams blood right out, emphasis on spams blood right out, and you can fairly easily dodge blood right. He's using it to get last hits. Pretty good. Getting free health and not getting hit, getting free mana. Like, yeah, cool. Ember Spirit, if they're maxing Sleight of Fist, they'll cast this a lot. Um, but even then, like, Flame Guard and Searing Chains, like, he casts a decent amount of spells, but he's one of those heroes that actually does a lot of damage with his spell cast, and a magic stick, like, will not be enough to sustain you. You are going to need some extra consumables, likely. Tango, also a very poor laner, going to be using Swashbuckle a lot to secure last hits, and, uh, sometimes he'll go on you with it, but, you know, not always. Phantom Assassin, going to be using Stifling Dagger a lot to secure last hits. Very cheap. She's going to be using it a lot. Do you see a trend here? Ricky. Okay, Ricky's kind of like a hit and miss thing, but frequently an aggressive Ricky will use his spells pretty decently. Uh, and if you can, ideally, 
the enemy does not cast all of their spells on one hero in your lane. So either all on you or all on your carry or off lane or whoever. Because that would be a lot of damage on that hero. But if they split up the spells, like you bait some to you, you let your off lane or a carry tank some, you guys are splitting the damage. And if you have a stick, like you're getting the charges when they use it on you, and you're getting some charges when they're using it on your carry, and you're not taking damage for it. And that makes like the stick better. Troll casts a decent amount of spells. Weaver casts a decent amount of spells. Crystal Maiden, her mana costs are really high, but eventually, like, she'll buy a lot of consumables to use spells early, and then eventually her passive kicks in and lets her keep casting spells. This guy cannot lane without casting Ion Shell, Keeper of the Light. Level 1, he won't use too many, but eventually he'll get Chakra Magic, and he'll be using that a good amount. Disruptor is also one of those heroes who... He's going to be spamming out spells... So that's good, but they're going to be high damage spells. And so we're still going to need enough consumables. But by buying a magic stick early, for example, as long as we have the consumables to be okay, we are going to start getting some extra value out of that magic stick because we start getting those charges and we know he's going to use spells. Oops. Lich, another hero who will spam out spells in his laning stage. Pretty much if a hero might start like three mangoes, you're going to need... Tangos and salves, but if you can fit a magic stick into your build early, you're going to get some value off of them spamming spells. Necrophos, Death Pulse, Oracle. Okay, Oracle, you have to have enough stats to survive because Purifying Flames is a very low cooldown spell. But if he doesn't kill you, you will heal more than this guy did damage to you. Unless he does like some fortune ends tricks, which many good oracles will do. But when he combos you, he is going to cast three spells at once. So if you have the consumable regen to get by, I'm repeating myself a lot saying this, but like I, I can't drive that point home enough. Then the stick will start getting a lot of value because he casts a lot of spells. Quop, you know she's going to cast Q a lot. Another hero where the Q does so much damage that a magic stick alone is not enough, but she's going to cast spells. Shadow Demon, spam spells. If he hits you with all five, that is way too many. But if you if he hits you with like one or two, it's not a big deal. Dodge the third, you've got three stick charges, and you don't take that much damage. Skywrath, depending what builds they do, they'll eventually spam out a lot of spells. Warlock, spamming out heal. Zeus, another hero, frequent spell cast, but they do a lot of damage. But if you're not standing in the creep wave and he's using arc lightning to secure last hits, like that's pretty good. But if it's a support Zeus who is, like, maxing Lightning Bolt, then he casts Lightning Bolt and he does, like, you know, 200 damage to you and you get back 15. Eh. It's not going to feel so good. Now, this is not an extensive list for the eventually category. And, in fact, even this list is not fully extensive, but I did go through all the heroes and I was like, yeah, these guys cast a lot of spells. There are other heroes who could also cast a decent amount of spells. You know, like, like everyone casts... Okay, that's actually not true. That's the point of this last item. Most people cast a decent amount of spells, but it's just, you have to think about how, how many and how much damage are they going to do? Would it be better for me to just buy more regen? Let's talk about this last list and you'll see a trend of the kind of hero here. How does Kunkka lane? Tidebringer. Tidebringer does not proc magic stick. So he's just going to chip you down and you're not going to get anything from your magic stick. It's not going to be any good. Nature's Prophet. He's going to chip you down with his right clicks. And he's going to use Nature's Call. The thing is, you might not even be range for Nature's Call. Because he might summon them further back and then run forward with the Treants. He's got some other spells, but he doesn't really use these in range of you. If he's using Sprout, he's trying to kill you. And you're probably out of position and very likely to die. And I don't know a magic stick will save you. The teleport, he's going to back up before he uses it. They just call. Very long cooldown, and they last for a while. So it's not so great against him. Flardar. He plays with his bash. Similar to Tidebringer, this doesn't, doesn't proc magic stick. Eventually, he'll stun you and try to combo. But when he is comboing, he's trying to kill you. Or do a ton of your health. And at that point, the one charge you got from the Slytherin Crush is not going to be enough to get you back in the game. Lifestealer, again, a right clicker. Doesn't really cast spells that much. And when he uses them, 
also probably trying to kill you like 100 to 0. Magic Stick is not good, not so good against people who do that, who try to kill you like all in one go. Magic Stick is really good against like the slow whittling uh, frequent spell usages. Tiny is a hero where because you're like stun locked between Avalanche and Toss, you may not even get a chance to use Magic Stick. And then it's incredibly high burst for relative to other spells. And so you might just, you might die before you even get to use the magic stick. Against Tiny, it might be better to just buy, and in fact, I'm going to tell you, I, it probably is better to buy a couple starting stat items, like two Iron Branches and a Fairy Fire, and you try to survive the burst, and then use your Fairy Fire. Like, eventually, he uses these together, two charges. That's not bad, but you have to be able to survive the combo. And don't forget, he's probably got an offlaner with him. So against Tiny, it's like, I wouldn't start with a magic stick, but I'll get it eventually. That's what this last category is. Like, I'm not getting it for the lane, but after I break off the lane and, like, we're starting to fight, like, you know, I'm still going to get charges from these guys, from the spells they cast, but it's not enough to warrant it in the laning stage. Clockwork, similar deal. Cast a decent amount of spells. Probably trying to kill you with them. And probably can kill you with them. It's much better better usually to be able to just avoid clockwork and not let him get close to you rather than try to out efficiency trade him with your health and mana dang it that's what i should have said at the start of this video shouldn't i <laughs> magic stick is kind of about trying to being uh more efficient than your enemies now nah, we're just gonna leave it here this is a bonus for the people who stuck through the whole thing it's about like out efficiency Ying, <laughs> being more efficient than your enemies and not so much about like we just burst him there's like i'm not efficient when i'm trying to burst you i will throw out three mangoes at once to kill you and then you're dead and then i'll get a couple more if i need to but these kind of heroes where it's like crystal maiden she's like slowly chipping you down with those cues and then they go for a kill disruptor slowly chipping you down and then getting a kill like all these heroes are kind of Similar in that vein. Whereas Pudge rarely casts any spells. Rot does not count because it's a toggle, and toggles don't count for the magic sticks. Hook once. But you know what? He does this out of sight, or he should. And if he's out of sight, you don't get a magic stick charge. You get hit, does a ton of damage, puts you way out of position, and the few stick charges you get in that time, probably not enough to save your life. But maybe Windlace might have saved you? Maybe Quelling Blade to cut all the trees and see him. Maybe a sentry to make sure he's not got vision of you with a ward. Those might be more efficient than a magic stick. Tree and Protector cast a lot of spells, but he does it from the trees. And you can't see him in the trees, so you don't get any magic stick charges. By the way, if you're a Bat Rider, support player, Undying, or Bristleback, and you don't want to give them a bunch of stick charges, try to cast your spells in Fog of War. Really next level thing is to click them, see their magic stick, cast a spell, and if they got a stick charge, they had sight of you. And if you were on the other side of the trees and they shouldn't have seen you, that should let you know they have a ward. I think that's it. Magic stick, really good. You will get it eventually. But it just, like, it depends when. And these heroes, I, I might get it as a starting item. These heroes, I will queue it up pretty early, if not a starting item. If they have, like, two of these high spellcasting heroes, I might get it as a starting item. Otherwise, I'm just going to get it pretty early. And if if the lane only has, say, one of these, and then someone like Pudge, I, like, I, I, I don't really need the magic stick that early. I will get it eventually. After I get the other things I want, like boots, windlace, the consumables I need to play the lane, and then I decide, hey, I think I'm going to go rotate to bottom lane, bring three of us there the goal of that is to bring three of the enemy heroes there when you have that many heroes in a lane you know spells are getting cast hey magic stick time now that i want to fight and when i fight we all cast our spells hey magic stick pretty good if you don't get a magic stick by like the 10 minute mark I don't know if you're going to get one at that point. Your slots are filled, and at that point, you may as well. Ah, actually, that, maybe that's not true. Let's bump it up to, like, 20 minutes. If you don't have a magic stick by 20 minutes, 
you can probably just forget about it. But any time before that, like, I think it's pretty good. But especially sooner. Frequent times I build stick, this will be the end. If it's not a starting item, I might buy it within the first two minutes if I think it's a good stick game, like against these guys. But in that first two minutes, I know I need other things. Like, I know I can be killed or I can lose the lane in that first two minutes. When, say, say you have a Lich. He comes in with five mangoes. And all I started with, with was a stick and I tried to skip regen. And he spams Frost Blast on me. I've just lost that lane within that first minute. So I need to have the items to not lose the lane right away. And then I can look to out-efficiency them with a fast stick. But I need to make sure those first couple minutes I'm okay. And so my starting items reflect that. But then with like the bounty gold and passive gold, I can quickly buy a stick and reach that point. And if they are not heroes who will spam me out that hard at the very beginning, like say Pudge, then I just don't need it that soon and I get it later. With that, we're done. Thank you for watching. I realize it's still like a little bit of a gray area, I know. That's itemization in Dota though. It's just, it's just hard. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe. Goodbye.